Did you know that for the first time in history, thousands of people are choosing cremation over traditional burial at the time of death? According to experts, this trend is expected to continue, with up to 70% of people preferring cremation over traditional burial in the next 10 years. So the question is, should Christians consider cremation? Let's discuss this in this video. First, there are four questions I want to ask and answer in this video. The first question is, what exactly is cremation? The second question is, what does the Bible say about cremation, if anything? The third question is one I'm often asked, will cremation affect my resurrected and glorified body that God will create for me at the time of the rapture? Finally, the fourth question is, I am a Christian and considering cremation. What should I take into account when deciding between cremation and traditional burial? So question number one, what exactly is cremation? Cremation is the process by which heat is applied to the body at extremely high temperatures inside a cremation chamber, essentially reducing the body to its basic elements. Most of the body, including soft tissue, is vaporized, leaving only bones. These bones are then further processed until they become a dry powder or bone particles, commonly known as ashes. Now, the Bible says, By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. The concept of cremation aligns with the idea that God used earth or dust to create our bodies, and through cremation, the body essentially returns to its original state. The journey of the body, through the flames, until it turns into ashes, is closely followed by studies and research seeking to understand not only the physical aspects, but also the environmental and social impacts of this choice. According to data from the North American Cremation Association, the cremation rate has seen a steady increase, reflecting changes in social preferences, economic constraints, and ecological considerations. It is estimated that over 50% of Americans now choose cremation, a number that is expected to grow in the coming decades. Scientifically, cremation is presented as a more sustainable alternative compared to traditional burial. Research indicates that conventional burials occupy vast stretches of land and involve the use of chemicals for embalming, wooden coffins, and gravestones, which together have a considerable environmental impact. In contrast, Cremation, despite consuming energy and releasing carbon emissions, requires less space and resources, aligning with a growing desire for more ecological practices. Beyond environmental considerations, cremation reflects a shift in cultural and religious norms. While some traditions see it as a form of purification and liberation, others look to the Bible and sacred texts for guidance on the practice. So, question number two. What exactly does the Bible say about cremation, if anything? You might be interested to know that in the more than 200 occasions in the Old Testament where death is discussed, traditional burial is the method by which a body is typically disposed of. However, the Bible does not explicitly state that this is the only way or that it should be the only way for a person to be disposed of. There are various references in the Bible to the bodies of people being burned, but no direct references to cremation. For example, you may remember that Saul and his sons were defeated in battle by the Philistines. When some of the Israelites found their bodies, it says the following, All their valiant warriors traveled by night to Bethshan and took the bodies of Saul and his sons off the wall. They brought them to Jabesh, where they burned the bodies. Then they took their bones and buried them under a tamarisk tree at Jabesh, and they fasted for seven days. What most likely happened here was that the bodies were in such a state, perhaps mutilated or simply too damaged, that a proper traditional burial or transporting the bodies back for burial was not practical, so they decided to burn the bodies. Another reference to bodies being burned, but not necessarily cremation, is found in 2 Kings 21.6, which says, Manasseh also sacrificed his own son in the fire 
practiced sorcery and divination, and consulted mediums and spiritists. Finally, in 2 Kings 23, 6 and 20, it says, Then Josiah turned and noticed. Several tombs were located on the hillside, and Josiah ordered the bones to be brought out and burned on the altar at Bethel to defile it. In verse 20, it further states that he executed the priests of the pagan shrines on their own altars and burned human bones on those altars to defile them. These references indicate the burning of bodies, but do not directly address the concept or process of cremation as a chosen funeral practice. In the narrative of the events described in 2 Kings 23, 6 and 20, King Josiah's actions reflect a period of intense religious reforms in the kingdom of Judah. This moment in biblical history, rich in symbolism and meaning, illuminates the complexity of funeral practices and their role within the cultural and spiritual context of the time. Josiah, determined to purify worship and restore strict adherence to the precepts of the Torah, undertook a vigorous campaign against pagan worship places. The act of burning human bones on the altars at Bethel was not just a demonstration of religious disapproval, but an attempt to eradicate any vestige of practices considered abominable. Although this act is not directly related to cremation as a chosen funeral practice or as a ritual itself, it highlights the manipulation of mortal remains in religious contexts and the powerful symbolism of fire in purification and desecration. Scientifically, cremation involves processes that have been studied both in terms of ethics and environmental impact. Researchers in the fields of archaeology and anthropology have explored how different cultures throughout history have treated their dead and what methods of cremation were used. These studies reveal a variety of practices, from simple outdoor pyres to modern cremation facilities that minimize the emission of harmful gases. Now just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, I would appreciate if you would like the video so that you can help me to continue spreading Christian messages. Subscribe and also click that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos that are uploaded every day. All right, let's keep rolling. The biblical perspective views the handling of bones and mortal remains as having deep spiritual implications. In Numbers 19.11, for example, it is stated that anyone who touches a person who has died and been buried will be unclean for seven days. This verse underscores the view of death as something that imposes a ritual separation requiring purification. However, cremation as a practice of handling the dead is not directly mentioned in the Bible, leaving room for interpretations and adaptations within Christian principles. Interestingly, modern science offers a new perspective on cremation, especially in relation to environmental conservation. Comparative environmental studies between traditional burials and cremation highlight how the latter can be considered a more sustainable alternative, reducing the ecological footprint associated with the use of land for cemeteries and the decomposition of bodies, which releases methane, a potent greenhouse gas. Therefore, the narrative around cremation, intertwined with biblical reflections and scientific insights, transcends the simple disposition of mortal remains and touches on fundamental issues about purity, memory, identity, and spiritual continuity. In the contemporary context, the choice between burial and cremation is influenced by a matrix of factors, including religious beliefs, environmental considerations, and personal desires. Thus, the dialogue between faith and science continues to shape funeral practices, reflecting both respect for tradition and adaptation to the demands of the modern world. Now, let's move on to the third question, which many people ask. How does this affect my resurrected body? How does this affect the body I will have when God gives me a body at the rapture? What will happen with all this? Let's read what the Bible says about our glorified bodies in 1 Corinthians 15. It states that, Just as with the resurrection of the dead, our earthly bodies are planted in the ground when we die, 
but they will be raised to live forever. Our bodies are buried in humiliation, but will be raised in glory. They are buried in weakness, but will be raised in strength. They are buried as natural human bodies, but will be raised as spiritual bodies. For just as there are natural bodies, there are also spiritual bodies. So, people often ask this question, and I hear it frequently. How is God going to put my body back together if I decide to be cremated? If you choose cremation, remember that God created humanity from earth and dust. If God could create man from dust, he is surely powerful enough to use ashes to recreate your body. Consider that there are many ways a body can be destroyed, eaten by animals, blown up in war or burned. God is not limited by how our bodies are disposed of. He can recreate a body for eternity, regardless of these factors. It's important to understand that over time, all bodies decompose into ashes. Scientifically, soft tissues decompose at varying rates, and complete skeletonization can take months to years. It can take decades or even centuries for bones to decompose entirely into dust, depending on soil conditions and the quality of the coffin. Ultimately, all bodies return to dust unless the Lord returns soon after a person dies. Therefore, God is not limited by the state of our bodies in His ability to recreate them. Scientific studies on decomposition show that the process is influenced by factors like temperature, humidity, and microorganisms. These studies align with taphonomy, the science that examines decomposition, fossilization, and preservation after death. They explain how the human body gradually breaks down into simpler components, eventually becoming part of the earth again. The scriptures provide comfort about the temporary nature of physical life and the promise of eternal life. In 1 Corinthians 15, 44 Paul speaks about the resurrection of the dead. So will it be with the resurrection of the dead. The body that is sown is perishable. It will be raised imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It will be raised in glory. It is sown in weakness. It will be raised in power. It is sown a natural body. It will be raised a spiritual body. This passage reflects the Christian belief that Although the physical body may perish and return to dust, there is a spiritual, eternal existence promised to all believers. Now let's address the fourth and final question. How can I decide if cremation is right for me? Here are some questions to consider if you or someone you know is thinking about cremation as an option. First, what kind of commemoration do you want for people when you die? An urn can be moved, whereas a grave with a headstone can be a place for loved ones to visit and find comfort. While your spirit will have departed, a grave can provide a physical place for memories. Do you want an open casket where people can see you one last time and say their goodbyes? This is not possible with cremation, but is an option with a traditional burial. Additionally, consider the convenience for family members traveling from afar. A traditional burial requires quick planning for a memorial service often within a week or 10 days, because the body can only remain in a certain state for so long. Lastly, the Bible does not explicitly prohibit cremation. Therefore, the choice between cremation and traditional burial involves personal preferences, religious beliefs, and practical considerations. The Bible does not specifically mention cremation as a method of body disposal after death. Consequently, there is no direct prohibition or explicit endorsement of cremation in the scriptures. Biblical burial practices generally involve interment. For example, notable Old Testament figures like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph were buried. And in the New Testament, Jesus Christ's body was buried in a tomb. The absence of direct references to cremation in the Bible leads to various interpretations based on general Christian principles and ecclesiastical traditions. Some argue that, since the body is seen as the temple of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20, it should be treated with honor and respect after death, which would favor traditional burial. Others contend that, 
because the physical body ultimately returns to dust, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Genesis 3.19 Cremation is an acceptable way to expedite that natural process, provided it is done respectfully. Historically, some Christian denominations restricted cremation based on the belief in the resurrection of the dead, fearing that cremation might somehow hinder resurrection. However, many of these denominations have revised their positions over time, recognizing that God is capable of resurrecting a body regardless of its physical condition after death. For instance, the Catholic Church officially permitted cremation starting in 1963 provided it is not chosen for reasons contrary to the Christian faith in the resurrection. Nonetheless, the church still prefers the burial of bodies or ashes, rather than the scattering or storing of ashes in an unsacred manner. Therefore, the decision regarding cremation is often left to individual discernment and personal beliefs within the context of the Christian faith. Many believe that as long as the choice for cremation is made with respect, and does not deny the doctrine of the resurrection, it is considered acceptable. Consistency with the Bible in matters of funeral practices, including cremation, should be analyzed through the general principles and fundamental beliefs of Christianity rather than specific instructions or comments from Jesus Christ. Jesus did not explicitly mention cremation or burial during his earthly ministry, as recorded in the Gospels. His teachings focused more on salvation, the kingdom of God, faith, love, and repentance. The main concern in the Christian faith is respect for the body as a creation of God and the temple of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20, as well as belief in the resurrection of the dead. The resurrection of Jesus is central to Christianity, serving as the hope and promise of future resurrection for all who believe. Jesus' burial in a tomb, Luke 23, 55, 56, John 19, 38, 42, exemplifies the traditional burial method of the time, but does not necessarily prescribe this practice for all times and cultures. Within the biblical context and Christian beliefs, what is most consistent is the dignity with which the body is treated after death and the maintenance of hope in the resurrection. If the decision for cremation is made with respect and honor for the deceased, and does not contradict the belief in the resurrection of the body, it can be seen as a viable option for Christians. The focus should remain on the spiritual significance of death and resurrection, not necessarily on the method of body disposal. Moreover, it is essential to consider the traditions, teachings, and guidelines of the specific denomination or faith community to which one belongs, as different groups may have varied interpretations of these issues. In summary, consistency with the Bible concerning cremation or burial is not based on direct instruction from Jesus or specific commandments, but rather on how these practices align with Christian principles of dignity, respect for the body, and belief in the resurrection. My brothers and sisters, I hope the answers to these four questions provide clarity as you consider a topic that many of us find difficult to discuss, death and the preparations we want to make for it. Did you know that for the first time in history, thousands of people are choosing cremation over traditional burial at the time of death? According to experts, this trend will continue to increase, with up to 70% of people preferring cremation over traditional burial in the next 10 years. As a Christian, considering cremation, what should you contemplate when deciding between cremation and traditional burial? Firstly, what exactly is cremation? Cremation involves subjecting a corpse to extremely high temperatures in a cremation chamber, reducing the body to its basic elements. Most of the body, including soft tissues, vaporizes, leaving only bones, which are then processed into dry powder or ashes. The Bible states, by the sweat of your brow, you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. Genesis 3.19 This suggests that cremation returns the body to its original state, as God created humanity from dust. Cremation 
has been extensively studied for its physical, environmental, and social impacts. According to the North American Cremation Association, the cremation rate is steadily increasing due to changing social preferences, economic constraints, and ecological considerations. Over 50% of Americans now choose cremation, and this number is expected to grow. Scientifically, cremation is considered a more sustainable alternative to traditional burial. Conventional burials occupy large tracts of land and involve embalming chemicals, wooden coffins, and gravestones, all of which have significant environmental impacts. In contrast, cremation consumes less space and resources, aligning with the growing desire for more ecological practices. Cremation also reflects a shift in cultural and religious norms. While some traditions view it as a form of purification and liberation, others look to the Bible and sacred texts for guidance. Now, what does the Bible say about cremation? In over 200 instances where death is discussed in the Old Testament, traditional burial is the common practice, but the Bible does not mandate it as the only method of body disposal. There are references to bodies being burned, but not specifically cremated. For example, when Saul and his sons were defeated by the Philistines, their bodies were retrieved and burned by the Israelites, who then buried the bones under a tamarisk tree at Jabesh, fasting for seven days, 1 Samuel 31, 11, 13. This was likely due to the impracticality of transporting mutilated or destroyed bodies for a traditional burial. In another instance, Sem Kings 21, 6 mentions Manasseh sacrificing his son in the fire. These references to burning bodies do not directly address cremation as a chosen funeral practice, but highlight the use of fire in specific contexts. Therefore, when considering cremation, reflect on your beliefs and preferences. Cremation is not prohibited in the Bible, and its acceptance has grown within many Christian denominations. The key is to approach the decision with respect for the body and faith in the resurrection, as God's power to resurrect is not limited by the state of our physical remains. Understanding these aspects can help you make an informed decision about whether cremation aligns with your faith and values. The concept of cremation and its practice is not directly addressed in the Bible. However, the narrative in Seth Kings 23.6 and 20, where King Josiah's actions reflect intense religious reforms in Judah, provides insight. Josiah's campaign against pagan worship included burning human bones on altars, an act meant to purify and eradicate abominable practices. This action, while not related to cremation as a chosen funeral practice, highlights the symbolic use of fire for purification and desecration. Cremation, as a modern practice, has been studied for its ethical and environmental impacts. Archaeologists and anthropologists have explored how different cultures have historically treated their dead, revealing a variety of cremation methods. These range from simple outdoor pyres to modern facilities designed to minimize harmful emissions. The biblical perspective on handling bones and mortal remains carries deep spiritual implications. For instance, Numbers 19.11 states that anyone who touches a dead body will be unclean for seven days, emphasizing the need for purification. Modern science presents cremation as a more sustainable alternative to traditional burial. Comparative environmental studies show that cremation reduces the ecological footprint associated with land use for cemeteries and the release of methane from decomposing bodies. This scientific perspective, combined with biblical reflections, broadens the narrative around cremation to include issues of purity, memory, identity, and spiritual continuity. The choice between burial and cremation today is influenced by various factors including religious beliefs, environmental considerations, and personal preferences. This ongoing dialogue between faith and science shapes funeral practices, balancing respect for tradition with modern demands. Regarding the resurrection, many people wonder how cremation affects the resurrected body. According to 1 Corinthians 15, our earthly bodies planted in the ground at death will be raised to live forever, 
They are buried in weakness, but will be raised in strength and glory. This passage assures believers that God, who created humanity from dust, can certainly recreate our bodies from ashes or any other form they might take. Consider that bodies can be destroyed in various ways, by animals, war, or fire. God is not limited by the condition of our physical remains in his ability to recreate our bodies for eternity. Over time, all bodies decompose into dust, and this process is influenced by factors such as temperature, humidity, and soil composition. Scientific studies on decomposition corroborate this, showing that bodies eventually return to simpler components, merging back into the earth. In summary, the Bible does not explicitly mandate burial over cremation. The focus is on the dignity and respect given to the body as God's creation and the belief in the resurrection. Therefore, whether one chooses burial or cremation, what matters is the respect for the body and faith in God's power to resurrect. So, brothers and sisters, I hope this discussion clarifies your questions about cremation and burial, helping you make a wise decision about your final arrangements. Share your thoughts and consider what aligns best with your beliefs and values. Scientific studies on decomposition show that it takes time for soft tissue to decompose. It can take months or even years for the entire body to decompose to the point where only a skeleton remains, a process known as skeletonization. It can then take decades or even centuries for the skeleton to decompose into dust, depending on factors such as soil composition and coffin quality. Ultimately, all bodies will return to dust, unless they remain intact until the Lord's return. God is not limited by the way our bodies are discarded when it comes to his power to recreate them. The process of decomposition is influenced by temperature, humidity, and microorganisms. These scientific findings are supported by taphonomy, which studies decomposition, fossilization, and preservation. The human body gradually disintegrates and becomes part of the earth again in a process that varies greatly. Simultaneously, the scriptures offer comfort about the transient nature of physical life and the promise of eternal life. In 1 Corinthians 15, 44 Paul speaks about the resurrection of the dead. The perishable body is raised imperishable, sown in dishonor and raised in glory, sown in weakness and raised in power, sown a natural body and raised a spiritual body. This passage reflects the Christian belief in a spiritual, eternal existence that transcends the material body. The fourth and final question we address in this video is, how can I decide if cremation is right for me? Here are some considerations. First, and most importantly, what kind of burial or commemoration do you want for yourself? If you choose cremation, your ashes can be moved from place to place, However, a grave with a headstone provides a place for loved ones to visit and remember you. This can be comforting, as they can return to your grave and recall fond memories. Do you prefer an urn or an open casket? An open casket allows people to say their final goodbyes and commemorate your life in person. Consider the convenience for your family and friends who may need to travel for your memorial service. Traditional burial requires timely arrangements due to the body's decomposition, which can be challenging for those coming from afar. The Bible does not explicitly mention cremation as a method of body disposal. Burial practices described in the Bible typically involve burying bodies, as seen with notable Old Testament figures like Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, and in the New Testament with Jesus Christ. However, there is no direct prohibition or endorsement of cremation in the scriptures, leaving the choice to individual discernment. In conclusion, whether you choose burial or cremation, the focus should be on the respect and dignity given to the body and the belief in the resurrection. Reflect on these considerations and decide what aligns best with your beliefs and circumstances. The absence of direct references to cremation in the Bible 
necessitates interpretations based on general Christian principles and ecclesiastical traditions. Some argue that since the body is considered the temple of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 19, 20, it should be treated with honor and respect after death, which traditionally favors burial. However, others contend that given the body ultimately returns to dust, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Genesis 3.19 Cremation is a respectful way to expedite this natural process. Historically, some Christian denominations restricted cremation due to concerns that it might impede the resurrection of the dead. Over time, many of these denominations have revised their positions, recognizing that God's power to resurrect a body is not limited by its physical condition after death. For instance, the Catholic Church officially permitted cremation starting in 1963, provided it is not chosen for reasons that contradict faith in the resurrection. Nonetheless, the Church still prefers the burial of bodies or ashes rather than the scattering or storing of ashes in an unsacred manner. Therefore, the decision regarding cremation is often left to individual discernment and personal beliefs within the context of the Christian faith. Many believe that as long as the choice for cremation is made with respect and does not deny the doctrine of the resurrection, it is considered acceptable. Consistency with the Bible in matters of funeral practices, including cremation, should be analyzed more through the general principles and fundamental beliefs of Christianity than by specific instructions or comments from Jesus Christ on the matter. Jesus did not explicitly mention cremation or burial during his earthly ministry, as recorded in the Gospels. His teachings focused more on salvation, the kingdom of God, faith, love, and repentance. The primary concern in the Christian faith is respect for the body as a creation of God and the temple of the Holy Spirit, 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20, as well as belief in the resurrection of the dead. The resurrection of Jesus is central to Christianity, serving as the hope and promise of future resurrection for all who believe. His burial in a tomb, Luke 23, 55, 56, John 19, 38, 42, exemplifies the traditional burial method of the time, but does not necessarily serve as a prescription for all times and cultures. Within the biblical context and Christian beliefs, what remains consistent is the dignity with which the body is treated after death and the maintenance of hope in the resurrection. If the decision for cremation is made with respect and honor to the deceased and does not contradict the belief in the resurrection of the body, it can be seen as a viable option for Christians. The focus should remain on the spiritual significance of death and resurrection, not necessarily on the method of body disposal. Moreover, it is important to consider the traditions, teachings, and guidelines of the specific denomination or faith community to which a person belongs, as different groups may have varied interpretations of these issues. In summary, Consistency with the Bible regarding cremation or burial is not based on a direct instruction from Jesus or specific commandments, but rather on how these practices are carried out, respecting Christian principles of dignity, respect for the body, and belief in the resurrection. So, my brothers and sisters, I hope the answers to these questions provide clarity. We often avoid discussing death but you might find yourself considering plans for how you want to be sent off when you die. I hope this video and these questions help you make a wise decision. See you in the next video. God bless you. Share with your acquaintances and leave your like and comment below with your opinion. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share with your friends so we can keep making them. For more videos like this, Hit the subscribe button and remember to click on the notification bell. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching.